Hello, this is Priscilla Rattel. I'm in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Fluid Art Studio. I'm excited, but I'm real little trepidatious. This is a 12 by 16 inch canvas. There's something I'm going to use, a sheet of acetate for my edge catcher. It could be cardboard. It could be already used. You could cut it to size. This one might come in handy for the long bits better than that one. That one's just a little short. Anyway, so I'm going to use my Artist Loft paint. I'm going to cover this canvas with it, actually which may or may not be a good idea, we'll see. Um, I want to do a saucer pour for the bottom, but before that I want to try and do a sky. And I'm a little confused about how much paint I might need in a layer covering the entire canvas. I don't really want the bottom to dry or get gloppy, so I'm going to have to kind of think being fast will be a benefit. I've combined a few colors for some drama in my sky and I thought about it if I'm going to tip my canvas and utilize the paint that I'm adding now to help everything flow dot 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 um, <laughs> lost my train of thought I need to be able to have it flow far enough so that um, when I add the colors on the bottom, I can flow those without the top moving, if that makes any sense at all. So these are the colors that I tried. And they were a pale purple that I'm not sure what's in, but the prism pores are primary elements and vivid intense. So I know that there's some quinacridone nicolazo gold from Golden in there, along with some Artist Loft white and some golden poppy that's a prism pour and... Uh, some Rhapsody Rose, which is a gorgeous color. Anyway, so I put that on a puddle of white, which I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to utilize the same container. Oh, Love You Pink was also in there. I'm going to just take the same container. the Love You Pink primary element and some more of this pale purple. I know I put a little tiny bit of vivid intense something or other in there. I'm not sure what. Oh, it was magenta actually. So make sure I have the right thing. That's Cupid's Crush. Where's my Rhapsody Rose? Okay, what have you done with the color you needed? I could always use Cupid's Crush. There it is. Not really far away. That's the Rhapsody Rose. That's another primary element. And I'm not sure about the order of these. I'm sort of changing it up, figuring that it's going to be very dramatic. That's the Golden Poppy. And I may, I may mush this around with a balloon. I'm thinking that it might need something to make an adjustment. And I've got this container of purple taunting me, so maybe I'm just going to add a little bit of that because it's right there. And I put it in the, in the small container because I didn't want to overdose it. I think it's a little is going to go a long way. I'm not sure. This is kind of new, new territory for me. That's a Princeton Art Tool Catalyst Spatula. Not sure what that is. It looks like a paint drip. No big deal. Let's use up all of that. These little containers were a gift to me for somebody who bought them thinking they were larger and they came to take a class. But I'm pretty sure in a pinch you could use anything like a, a, any kind of plastic bottle cap. Okay, so let's have a go at moving that around before we do. Let's just do the balloon roll. I've got nothing, to, nothing really to lose. by making a huge, funky, funky cloud. A huge, funky, beautiful cloud. 
which I may have to tip again. Oh, that was huge. I was like, what's that? I need to squish it. But it was a lump, a real lump. I'm liking the way that looks a lot. I don't know if I want to do anything else to that. But I do have this one spot over here that I don't want. And I think I'm going to steal a little bit of paint and add what I consider to be another area. Because as long as it's not as dark or dramatic as the one in the front, it should be fine, right? Let's tip that again anyway. Let's tip it in the direction we want it to go. Because that was the, my, the, my original point was to tip it. I see something in there. Might have been just a bubble. Now I'm going to just keep experimenting and I know I have a straw here. I'm a little afraid of messing up. So maybe I'm just going to grab my balloon again. I don't want to take away all the great colors, but I do want a huge dramatic cloud. And I'm afraid if I don't wipe that balloon off, I'm going to just ruin the depth of color. Just have a little low Go back the other way. Lots of times if I go in the opposite direction from the direction I really want things to move in, then I change up the pattern. I kind of liked it better before, but... I think a little gentle blowing and maybe... Risk... The odd spiral. Because I can sort of thing. I'm a little uncertain about using, you know, the artist, lo artist loft in the background. If I got my head in the way, please excuse me. So I'm going to try and moderate my my desire to swirl to small and insignificant affectations. There, I just blew that out of the water. I'm going to throw this in the bucket and I'm going to quick like a bunny move that forward and give myself what I need. And I need a base or I think I need a base I'm going to go in front and in back. Actually, I'm just going to do the whole thing. That's some Chantilly lace. I'm going to add the colors that I don't mind getting lost on the bottom. And if they show through, that's great. This is some Vivid Intense um, Aztec Browns. It's a pearl. It's color art. There is a color art coupon code in case you need to know that. This is not one of my favorite bottle shapes, I have to admit. And I'm just going to go to town on all the greens I've collected and maybe some purple and definitely some Mayan gold. The Mayan gold I love so I try and keep a bunch on hand and mixed up. This is Emperor's Gold when it comes down anytime now. And that's a beautiful color. Those are all earth tones, so I've got Baltic Amber. Which is also gorgeous. And a little bit of Indigo Violet. I don't mind covering all the white. And I may go back for seconds or thirds on a color. This is winter green. I 
Not sure why I left the golden poppy out. It's taunting me. No, I'm not going to add that. <laughs> I am, however, going to use my Fandango, which was always my intention. To be the vast majority of my color. Now, I'm not planning on using any cell activator. And I have some other colors. I have a primary element called Fresh Pine, which I think reminds me very much of the winter green right now. So we'll go light on that. I've got some deep amethyst mixed with pink diamond and chantilly lace that made a beautiful bright purple that I think would work well. And every time I mix a custom color, then I'm stuck with that because I don't use it first. I need enough paint to go across this whole thing and I probably already have enough paint. I'm going to put one more color in which is green tea and I love this color so I, I'm glad I found it when I was organizing my colors today. So those are very pretty in my opinion and that's unusual for me because I'm not a big fan of browns and greens. So I'm going to put this in the middle, and gosh, let's see how this is tipping. It's going to tip some no matter what I do. I want that to come out all at once. So I'm going to push it all the way up to the edge. Well, I think I have enough paint. I'm going to leave that right over the edge. I I know that there is a useful a usefulness for this saucer technique. I just I'm not good at it enough because I've only done it a few times. And I'm expecting to use my edge catcher, which it really doesn't look like I need to, but I wish I hadn't done that to the sky. Grab some white. Grab some more white. Actually, actually just grab a Q-tip. Put some white paint on it first. Try not to stick my fingernail in there. Let's flood it. Fortunately, the white has Floetrol in it. Which is a paint leveler. And alternatively to all of that, I can just... We'll pretend it's a pale cloud in the background. And hopefully, if I'm correct, it'll just disappear and meld right in with what everything else is. All right, I never did put any trees in there or anything. And I've got a little bit of paint left on my saucer. And I'm really tempted to uh, continue holding on to my spatula until I've decided I'm absolutely done with it because there's paint on it. All right, I'm gonna put it aside. I'm gonna try and become brave. Though I am seeing that that shape in the cloud is bugging me. Well, I'm not sure it's the prettiest thing ever, but um, it's going to have to do for now. So I'm going to try line up my edge catcher and hope that the bottom moves faster than the top does. But 
in 2020 hindsight, if I'd made a smaller amount in the, in the top, it probably would have helped. The bottom's not moving very quickly, but it is moving. And I might actually like the cloud better after it moves for a while. So I don't know if you can see that, but I'm getting a puddle of paint. And I'm going to move it down and move it up so that it covers. I've got three minutes left of my 16 of my 20 minute timer. This is kind of weird and cool. I'm going to grab this paint off my edge catcher with my spatula. And put it right along the bottom. Which really wouldn't be that hard if I liked what I had enough to just fill in with some more paint. And I expect to be able to tip that down Here's my edge catcher. Now if I had a, a deeper fluid Artist Loft white base, everything would flow a lot better and faster. But I'm really actually liking what I've got. I wish I wasn't pointed away from the light. And the paint that was on my edge catcher that's red and purple that you're seeing is from so long ago that I know I can scrape up whatever I've got that I need. See how well covered we are. We're better than we were and I've got enough paint to cover so I'm going to start telling you guys things I'm supposed to tell you and I'll steal that paint. I want to look and see if I've got a balloon glove. I'm definitely going to need to torch and I think I'm going to use a Princeton Art Tool Catalyst spatula to take whatever paint is on my other spatula and I think I'm going to give myself some trees with whatever I've got. I probably could have grabbed a smaller. That wasn't very clever of me but I'm not done yet. I can just put little golden trunks in later or in a minute, whenever. Try not to put little tails in. I've got a couple funky things, but I got one minute left to tell you what I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to shimmer this at you. And I'm not sure how in love I am with it yet, but um, I so want to be able to put those trunks in for you, but I don't think I have the time to do both the shimmer. Come on. Wow. The shimmer test and the other. So I'm going to fill in that. And that little white dendrite is just that. It's an artist loft dendrite. I'm not going to change the configuration of the landscape at all. But I am going to put trunks in those trees. On those trees. I love you guys. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Don't forget the thumbs up. Please share my videos. And when you watch them longer, you help my standing on YouTube. My paint pouring recipe is under show more. My email address is EASPB in the word gallery spelled out at gmail.com. Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter links are all on my link tree near the 20% off color art coupon code and the 10% off pixel paint designs coupon code. Please ask questions. You're entirely welcome. Check my community board for tomorrow's video. I love you guys. Thanks to those of you who have joined the membership. It's $9.99 a month and you help support the studio's production of videos. And thank you very much for the donations through PayPal. The icon is also on the bottom right-hand corner of my YouTube channel banner. I love you guys. You're